This is Pod Populi, podcast for the people. The Great Love Debate. It's the Great Love Debate. The Great Love Debate. It's the Great Love Debate. Hi again, everyone. It's Brian Howie. Welcome to the Great Love Debate, the world's number one dating and relationship podcast since 2015. It's very early in the morning as I record this. So sometimes I wake up and I want to record a podcast. Uh, I am here in the very fine studios of Pod Populi Podcast for the People. And before I get into all that I want to get into, I got to do a quick read that I think you guys are want to get into. And uh, I mentioned a couple weeks ago, but this is a casting. So are you dating someone online that you've never met in person and you're ready to meet them for the first time? If so, listen up, because this TV casting call may be the one for you. They are now casting virtual couples who've yet to meet in person. This is from the Emmy Award-winning Bunim Murray Productions. You know them as the producers of MTV's The Real World. This show is going to be on a major cable network, and they're now casting this uh, new relationship experiment TV show. So are you in love with someone you've never met in person? From the pandemic to long distance to just plain nerves, whatever the reason, it's time to make your first meeting and make it the most memorable experience of your life. In this relationship experiment, you're going to meet this person. You will meet the individual that you are falling for or have completely fallen for in person for the first time ever. Don't worry about trying to decide where, when, if, how to meet your online love. It's going to happen. They've got it covered. So an adventure of a lifetime is just one click away to apply, and you should apply. Go to bmpcasting.com. That's BMP like Bunum Murray Productions. B as in boy, M as in Mary, P as in Peter. bmpcasting.com slash never met. bmpcasting.com slash never met. It is open to all ages over 21. Good luck. I like that. So uh, first a shout out. We asked a a couple weeks ago for people who are in what we call the 300 Club. I don't know. I think we've done 400 episodes of of this podcast, something like that. We lost a few back in the day to to the interwebs, to some feed transfers and Apple screw-ups and stuff. But I think we've done about 400. So almost nobody has perfect attendance. But we, we, we asked for people who've had 300 or more episodes of this show in their brains, that they've listened to 300 more episodes, which is basically six years of podcasts. We do one a week, you know, 300 or more. That's pretty good loyalty. And we got quite a few responses. Uh, So quick shout out to some of those who, who reached out. Nathan, Yvonne, Neil, Gary, Jeff, April, Nicole, Lonnie, Kirsten, Marissa, and a whole bunch of others that I probably forget or I didn't keep track of because I didn't organize it properly. They reached out. That's hugely, hugely appreciated. We're going to try and give you 300 more. Um, I know a certain someone I'm very close to who hasn't listened to nearly that many. So we are grateful. And to the rest of you, catch up. Get with it. Binge away. So one of the questions that, that a couple always gets asked when they're when they're introduced to someone is how did you guys meet? How'd you guys meet each other? Like there's going to be some awesome answer to that. And, and to that question, I usually say, who cares? Who cares? Because that's my answer now. But you know who cared for a long, long time about how someone met me? I did. I absolutely cared. I was totally fixated on and fascinated by the idea of meeting someone cute, rom-com style, interesting fashion, fighting over a parking space, trapped in an elevator, getting her order by accident at Starbucks. Is there a Tiffany here? Yeah, that. I wanted something like that. I always wanted to be the one who had the best story. I want to have the best answer to that. How'd you guys meet? Wait till you hear this. 
I wanted to be the one who people would tell other people about. Like, they must have the best love because they have the best story. Oh, my God, you're never going to ma- guess how Brian Howie met his girlfriend. I had this weird, obsessive, probably self-centered ego thing. I get it. <laughs> it's not good. I'm not proud of it. But I really, really wanted that for a long, long time. I would date girls way longer than I should simply because I love the story of how we met. And I think I lost interest in girls way faster because how we met bored me. That's ridiculous, right? I remember way, way back in the day, way back in the day, kids, um, I met somebody online, like back in the days of like match. And the whole time, like even on like the first date, I'm like, I hate this. I don't want to meet somebody online. That's terrible. That's not interesting. That That's not romantic. And so I like held it. She was great and smart and pretty lawyer, the whole thing. And I, I held it against her of how we met. That's how ridiculous I was. Am? Was? Am? TBD. I wanted to be the one who took 10 years to say how I met your mother. I wanted all of that. And then one day you meet a girl and you go out and you kiss her in the street and that's that. And nobody cares how you met. Least of all you. But the reason people ask It isn't really about you and your relationship. It's about them and theirs or their lack of a relationship. They want to know the secret. They want to know the magic formula. They believe that your where and your how can sometimes lead them to their answer. But in reality, it's completely irrelevant. How you met doesn't matter to them. If you met at Arby's, it doesn't mean Arby's is a magic place for romance, although it's not bad. It's still just a place for curly fries. But people want to know. They want to help. They want answers. Many of you listen to this show because you want help and want answers. And we don't necessarily give you those, at least not a nice, neat package. We just give you possibilities. But the people around you, they don't like to let possibilities play out. Not theirs, not yours. They want to stick their hands in and meddle and manipulate fate. And if you're single, no, they don't want it to happen organically for you. They're impatient. I've said on the show many times that I think an extremely high compliment is when somebody asks, Why are you still single? They don't ask that of somebody that isn't desirable. They don't ask that of somebody that seemingly nobody wants. They ask that because it's like, you're great. Who wouldn't want you? So be flattered. Be flattered. But here's the flip side to that, and I've had it happen to me. I remember there were two very attractive, very single girls that I knew in New York City offered to set me up. And I said, no. And do you know why I said no? Because I didn't trust their judgment, because I didn't trust their opinion of me. Because if you're single and you're attractive, as they were, and you want to hook me up rather than throw your own hat in the ring and try and date me yourself, then I'm sorry, your opinion of me is lacking. It's subpar. You shouldn't want to pawn me off. You should think, I'm amazing. I don't want him for somebody else. I want him for me. If I'm amazing, you should want me for you. Not, you're amazing. I don't, not good enough for me, but this person. So I didn't trust their rating of me. If you think I'm not good enough for you, but I'm good enough for this person that you know at work, either you think the person at work is better than you, which I highly doubt, or you don't think I'm very great to begin with. So who wants that? I didn't, I wouldn't. So that's where we're going to begin. I want to take a little deeper dive into these meddling, I guess we'll call them fixer-uppers in your life. But uh, I'm going to take a quick break before we kick it all off. And we will be back right after this. So I'm going to uh, start with the bottom line and then work backwards here. Bottom line is you need to be your own fixer-upper. You don't even know what you want or like. You think someone else does? Everyone out there is just throwing darts. You're throwing darts. 
they're throwing darts, which is fine. You got to throw a lot of darts. And if you throw a dart, a lot of times, eventually you're going to get more proficient at it. And eventually you're going to hit the bullseye. So you got to keep throwing darts and eventually you're going to hit one. So we get emails. Should I hire a professional matchmaker? And we've been pretty clear on this. Of course not. You're basically setting your money on fire. Their lists of people are not only no more of a match for you than tearing a page out of a phone book, they're probably less. I mean, if you tore a page out of a phone book and started dating everybody, that's the same as the matchmaker list. It's random. It's probably worse because it's a lot of people who really don't have a lot of relationship success to the point where they have to pay, especially the guys. Oh, you're too busy to date, but you're suddenly going to put enough time into date me. You don't want to date that guy. Like the phone book. Is the phone book a dated reference? (laughs) <laughs> you know what I mean. I think there's still phone books propped up against a door somewhere. Dating is about spark and chance and fate and putting yourself in a position as often as possible to find spark and take a chance and embrace fate. Some people let their families hook them up. And I'm not talking like old school arranged marriage. I'm talking about your grandmother who says, that Rick from the UPS store seems like a nice fella. Maybe Rick is a nice fella. And maybe you will fall in love with Rick if you went in there to mail package or buy some packing tape. I don't know. My point is grandma has no idea. She probably has an overinflated opinion of you. But grandma has no idea what you like, what you want, what makes you excited, what turns you on. Oh, grandma. What gets your heart racing? What fills you with excitement? All she knows is that Rick loaded a package into the trunk of her car, which is not a bad start. Could mean he's a nice guy. Could mean that's the store policy and that's his job. Who knows? It means nothing in the big picture. And your friends, they never are a great read on who you are, what you want or what you need. Friends, usually when it comes to this stuff, fall into two categories. The ones who overrate you or the ones who underrate you. Almost none of them have an accurate read on you or properly rate you, either on your appeal or what is appealing to you. They stick you at the table at their wedding and they they plot it all out like, oh, let's put them next to each other because they might like, like each other. You know what? You might like each other, but you only like each other because you found that out by sitting next to each other. It didn't really have much to do with their magic insight on it. You got together out of proximity, and then proximity led to possibilities, which is why we always say go out of your house. The best dating site is Earth. Your proximity to live people will always lead to those possibilities. And you could do that by yourself without any help from anyone. Go out of your house, go out of your house right now and go sit next to someone. That's got a better chance of fixing you up than anything grandma does or your friend does. Get on a plane and sit next to someone. Don't. Sit next to me and talk to me because I don't want to be talked to on a plane, but I'm a weirdo. Go grab a seat at the bar and sit next to someone. Those people you sit next to, they're no, no more likely or less likely to be the one for you than anyone your friend knows or your family knows. It's a game of chance and putting yourself in a position to succeed. The cute guy or the pretty girl at the office, talk to them. HR has a problem with that? Fuck them. You're allowed to talk to people. You're allowed to click. You're allowed to inquire and discover. Make your own moves. Put yourself in a position to succeed. Someone's going to say, well, what about that guy? What about this girl? And that's great. And that they're just pointing you towards possibilities, which is helpful and should always be appreciated, but it still goes back to you. You are always, always in charge of your outcome if you raise these possibilities for yourself. Can we possibly see everything? No. Are we like those fish with with 10 eyes? Are there fish with 10 eyes? I think I invented a creature for the purpose of analogy. It's like a fish. It's like a 10-eyed fish. I don't know. You can't be expected to see everything. I get that. So is is it helpful to get a nudge or a little bit of information? Hey, you know, Kevin is single now. I think that helps. Diane just filed for divorce, you know. 
I think that could be hugely valuable. Thank you very much. You should meet my friend. I think if you start there, just start there. You should meet my friend. Could be for a hundred different reasons. Could be business connection. Could be social. Could be you guys like the same things. I don't know. You should meet my friend. I think that's a good thing because who knows what a meeting can lead to. The very best girl in the world. The very best girl I know and have ever met came from my friend saying, you should meet my friend. And I'm not sure the person who said that thought for one second it would lead to anything beyond a cordial conversation. But that's not a fix-up. That person was not acting as a fixer-upper. It was creating connections and connections that can lead somewhere. Nobody knows what you want or like or need. You Don't even know what you want or like or need. But it's about maximizing opportunities and exploring possibilities. Huge value in that. I'm the guy who wrote the book, How to Find Love in 60 Seconds. That was not about a quickie in the bathroom. That was about exploring the possibilities and the opportunities that were right in front of you every single day and not missing out on that. You can do all that on your own. You can seek the network of others but the burden and the outcome is always in your hands. Be your own fixer-upper. And a little uh, sidebar or a bonus thought here. I have said, and many of you have said and heard the phrase, you can't change how someone feels or you can't change how someone thinks. And those two things may or may not be true. And I'm not sure how strongly I feel in those, about those two things when we're talking about absolutes. I, you know, I, I have an inclination on them and I have some thoughts on them, but I don't, I'm not like this is the way it is and this is the way it should be. I'm not sure. But I absolutely think you can change how someone understands. I do believe that. I think if you say the right thing in the right way at the right time, the light bulb can go off. And that may alter their perception of things or you or the situation. I'm somebody who's always better off writing it down. It gives me clarity of thought. And it's weird that I don't do that for this podcast. I kind of ramble on this podcast. And if I wrote it down, it would probably be a little bit better. But when I have to say something important to somebody, I think I write it down because I think I'm like, this is clearly how I'm going to make them understand with this sentence and this paragraph and this word structure, all of it. That's the way I am. So maybe that's why you guys don't understand me sometimes. I don't do a good job, enough job of writing it down. But I think if you say the right thing the right way at the right time, through the right format, whatever, the light bulb can go off and that really might alter their perception of all of it. Almost every broken relationship stems from bad communication. Either the relationship didn't have it from the start Or it broke down towards the middle, which led to the end. Some people don't say things because they don't know how the other person will react. Which probably shouldn't matter, but they don't know. You know, you probably should never know how the other person will react. Even if you're proposing, you're not entirely sure how the other person will react. You're only hoping. But some people don't say things because of it. Some don't say things because they expect the other person already knows. They think it's obvious. Some don't say things because they don't have clarity on them themselves. They haven't quite formulated it in their head. They should have a podcast and just talk it out. But all of those lead to a lack of understanding of the moment, of the issue, of the situation, and of the relationship. So you might have to try a few different ways to express it. And trust me, I am the king of odd analogies and mixed metaphors, but I'm constantly trying to get people not necessarily to agree with what I think or feel or believe. I'm trying to get people to understand. You don't have to share the perspective. You have to understand it. Or it would be hugely helpful if you did understand it. Why did you do this? Why did you think that? When did this happen? All of those, the, the real answers lie in the realm of understanding. The value is in the understanding. And understanding isn't always about reason or being right. It's about hearing. It's about getting it to sink in. Oh, I get it now. I can see what you mean. That's why that happened or why you did that or why you thought that. Ah, 
And that calms everything. And that brings you to a place where you can get closer or reconnect or connect for the first time. We do a lot around here talking about trying to learn the other person, which is, I believe, be curious, be curious, be curious, ask the questions, try and learn the other person. But a big part of that is about understanding the other person and yourself. Why did I react that way? What led to that decision? What made me think that? Thinking, learning, understanding, understanding, that can and should always lead to changing. They thought you did this because they believed you were doing that. They didn't understand. Help them understand. Give them the information. Don't let them guess. Express everything in the way you need to express it, as often as you need to express it. And then, only then, can you see where the chips lie and if the outcome has shifted or improved or been salvaged. Don't focus on the I love you. Try to understand why they love you. Because that leads to so much more. All of that. Understanding. Goes to growing. Goes to learning. Goes to evolving. And hopefully, for the two of you, sharing. So, did I give you a few uh, random different bites of the Great Love Apple there? Yes, I did. So you can get a big bite, Great Love listeners, August 31st, live. We are back. City Winery in Nashville, Tennessee. We're going to get our Nashville on. Um, It's a really good venue, and Nashville is always just one of the funnest places we do this show. Uh, Go to citywinery.com or greatlovedebate.com for tickets to that. September 21st, final answer, September 21st. Boston. We are back in Boston. Uh, Also one of the best places to do this show. Uh, We're adding Croatia, if you can believe that. I told you the other day that certain places I didn't want to go anymore. That's one place I absolutely want to go. And doing the show there um, is going to be great. All of the information can be found at greatlovedebate.com. Shoot us an email, greatlovedebate at gmail.com if you've got questions, thoughts, comments, or anything else. And please, as always, like, share, review, This podcast, your reviews do and always will mean a lot in the podcasting ecosystem because we say it every week at the Great Love Debate, we never stop making love. See you next time. (laughs) 